Kayaking with your dog can be an absolute blast, but it can also ruin what was supposed to be a fun day out or go horribly wrong if your dog isn't properly prepared or trained for it. In this video, I'm going to show you how to choose a kayak that works for your dog, the equipment you'll need, as well as a simple way to modify your kayak to make sure it's dog friendly and comfortable. I'm also going to show you how you can prepare your dog for an awesome first experience kayaking together with a few training exercises. With a little pre-trip training, as well as my tips for your first real trip to the water, you'll be successfully kayaking in no time. Hi, I'm Laura from DoggyU, and I'm a certified guide dog mobility instructor, trick trainer, and service dog trainer. And me and my dog Cool Whip are also avid kayakers. In fact, I've been kayaking for about 15 years now with dogs, and it's an absolute blast. So today I'm going to teach you what you need to know to successfully kayak with your dog. Choosing a kayak. Get a boat that makes sense for the dog you're planning to take with you. Make sure there's enough space for that particular dog. You can choose from a sit on top or a sit in kayak. I chose a very stable sit on top kayak that's a fishing style kayak. I did that because I tend to use it during warmer weather and it gives me a lot of additional space for equipment. When you choose a sit in kayak, you tend to have to put the dog between your legs, which can be a little bit annoying on longer paddles if you have a larger dog. But I also have a sit in kayak that I use in colder weather because it means I get a little less wet. That's probably not important in places like Florida, but it's very important in places like New England where you want to extend your kayaking season. If your dog doesn't have a solid stay, your dog will likely do better in a sit-in hole. Also know that the wider the boat, generally the more stable it is. Stability, especially with larger dogs, will be really important once you get on the water. It's easier to get a dog on and off of a sit-on-top style kayak, but you'll generally feel more secure with a lower center of gravity in a sit-in style boat. A lot of this comes down to personal preference, so be sure to try a bunch of kayaks when possible so you know what you like. Also, make sure there's a suitable space for your dog to rest. Some kayaks will have like ridges in the middle or other impediments that will be uncomfortable for your dog. If there's only a spot in the back for your dog, are you comfortable with not being able to see them while you're paddling? If not, is there a space at your feet that's comfortable? You want to think about those things when picking out a boat. Renting before buying is a great idea. Renting the boat so that you can get a feel for how stable it is will prevent you from making a costly purchase that ultimately doesn't fit your needs. You can also check out the used market. I bought both of my boats off Facebook Marketplace. Also, make sure your kayak is weighted for your weight plus your dog's weight plus a little extra wiggle room. So now you've seen the two boats that I use, but there's so many options out there. I would love it if you would go down to the comments and let me know what boat you're using as well as the size of the dog that you're using it with and what you like about it. That way we can kind of build a working list for everyone who's watching this video so that they can get ideas about what boat might work well for them and their dog. So let's talk equipment. It's a good idea to get your dog a properly fitted life vest. I use the Roughwear float coat and this thing has lasted me like 10 years. I'll link it down in the description below. But there are plenty of life jackets out there on the market. If your dog has sensitive eyes or you're spending long days in the sun, I would also consider dog goggles. A GPS collar can also add additional security, especially if you're going on long or remote paddles or multi-day trips. Nobody plans on their dog taking off, but if something happens, a GPS collar can be a literal lifesaver. Stay tuned for an upcoming video where I'm going to be talking about the GPS collar I use and how I train a positive reinforcement tone recall to that collar. Go on down and smash that subscribe button and hit that little bell so you get notified when that video comes out. Leashes. Leashes around water are very controversial because they can absolutely be a hazard and become stuck on things and potentially drown your dog. If you choose to use a leash, you need to know your risks. Never tie it to anything and carry a seatbelt cutter, knife, or scissors on your life vest so you can easily cut it off if needed. Ideally, get your training to a place where a leash isn't necessary for your dog to safely remain on the kayak. Some other smaller items that you might want to have with you would be a dry bag that can carry both your items you need to keep dry as well as some food for longer trips. You'll also want to carry a dog bowl and water if you're going to be kayaking in the ocean. It can get really hot very quickly out on a kayak and you want to be prepared. Grip tape. Now this is the modification I want to have for my dog. If your kayak doesn't already have grip tape where your dog is going to sit or stand, I recommend you add some so that your dog is feeling comfortable and secure, especially if they tend to walk around like on the top of a sit on top kayak, that grip tape can really be helpful and it's a very cheap modification to help your dog be comfortable. Finally, if you have a dog that loves to swim no matter the temperature, I have a wetsuit jacket that I have for my dog that I can put on in the colder weather so that she doesn't freeze when she gets back onto the boat. 
All right, so let's talk about training for both you and your dog. You're gonna wanna practice with your boat on water a few times without your dog so you can get a feel for how it handles in both flat and running water. You also might wanna practice flipping it so that you know how to get back in in that scenario. Also make sure your dog is comfortable and able to swim. Your dog doesn't need to be an avid swimmer, but they do need to know what to do in case your kayak tips or they fall out. We don't wanna have a dog that's panicking or afraid of the water. So while you're getting those solo runs in so you feel confident in your boat, it's time to train your dog to do some basic but essential kayak dry land obedience skills. I want you to practice these behaviors with your dog wearing their life jacket, as everything is gonna feel just a little bit different to your dog when they're wearing that equipment. You're gonna to wanna to brush up on some basic obedience skills, including sit, down, stay, come, a hand touch for being able to move them easily into different positions around the boat, a hup cue or a cue that means get into the boat, an off cue or a cue that means get off of something, as well as a release cue. It's really important that your stay has a release cue such as free, so that your dog knows to remain in that stay or on the boat until given other instructions. I've linked some videos on the training these behaviors down in the description below so that you can check them out. Be sure to start these behaviors without the kayak first if you don't already have these behaviors trained with your dog. Practice giving the cues from a seated position. If you need additional help teaching these skills, Definitely check out the DoggyU community at patreon.com slash doggyu, where you get access to over 100 Patreon exclusive videos, as well as a monthly live Q&A where you can get your questions answered. If your dog isn't already familiar with unstable surfaces, consider practicing your obedience on canine fitness equipment like peanuts or fit bones or couch cushions to get your dog used to that unstable footing while practicing their obedience. Next, grab your treat pouch and fill it with tasty goodies. If you need ideas for small, easily consumable treats for your pup, check out this video up here and I'll link my favorite treats down in the description below. We want to introduce the dog to the kayak in your house, garage, or yard. Be sure to stabilize the kayak so that it won't tip if they try to interact with it. To introduce a dog to a new item like this, I like to play the touch the boat game, which is essentially a shaping exercise where your dog learns to touch a potentially intimidating object. Playing this game with new items frequently will actually train your dog that items they may find scary are actually opportunities to play the touch the boat game with you and get reinforcement. This is a great confidence building activity. To play this game, you're going to mark with a yes or a click and reward for your dog looking at the kayak, walking towards the kayak, touching the kayak, etc. until your dog is happily running up to the kayak. I like to toss the cookie away from the boat so that they have a chance to reapproach the boat at their own pace. You'll also want to practice dragging the kayak around and getting your dog used to the noise of the paddles hitting the side of the kayak or of it plopping down on the ground. Carrying the kayak to water is another part of the kayaking picture, so we want to get our dogs used to it. And if you found this video to be helpful so far, be sure to head down to the bottom of this video and boop that like button. Jake, Cool Whip, and I would be so grateful. If your dog still seems nervous of this bigger boat, you can also start by just letting it hang out in your living room for a week or so so they can investigate it at their own pace. Make sure it's stabilized and won't tip if they decide to try to get on to investigate. You can even tip it on its side and periodically drop treats in the hole for your dog to find. Once your dog is comfortable with the presence of the boat, it's time for some kayak obedience. When starting training on the kayak, first stabilize the kayak so it won't tip when practicing your skills. Practice all of your obedience cues on the kayak first with you in the standing position. Make sure you also practice while your dog is wearing their life vest. You can ask the dog to jump onto the kayak while you hold onto the handle, in case you need to help them get back into the boat if they jump off or fall out. Practice using your hand touch to move the dog into different areas of the boat if there's more than one place for them to sit. Now you're gonna hop into the boat and practice sitting on the boat with your dog outside of the boat and you're gonna pretend to paddle. Paddling is part of the kayak experience, so your dog needs to get used to that too. Once your dog is comfortable watching you paddle, have them get into the boat with you and practice paddling. Yes. Paddling so close to your dog is something they really need to get used to. Yes. Intermittently reinforce for staying in place. Be sure to practice with your dog between your legs both facing you and facing away from you if that's part of how your dog will ride in the kayak. Practice making the noise of the paddles hitting the sides of the kayak, as this will definitely happen when you're out on the water and could be concerning to your dog at first. Make the paddle noise, mark, and feed. We're trying to create a lot of value for your dog for remaining calm in the kayak, no matter what happens. And we do this by associating the kayak with a primary reinforcer, aka a tasty treat. Next, create instability in the kayak on dry land and practice there. Gently rock the boat back and forth to get your dog used to the feeling of staying on board while the kayak moves. Practice giving your obedience cues from the seated position in the kayak off of the water. 
If you have room for the kayak in your house, it's a good idea to train for just a few minutes a day for a couple of weeks. You can also use the kayak as their bed or place while you're practicing your downstays while you watch TV. Heck, spend some time watching Netflix together in your kayak. Once they're comfortable with these exercises on dry land, it's finally time to take it to the water. Before you go on your first adventure, I recommend that you exercise your dog first. Your first trip should be short with the goal of getting your pup out there for just five to 20 minutes or so. So a slightly tired dog will make that first trip a bit easier. You want the dog to be comfortable and having fun, but also able to settle. If it's warm, consider letting your dog swim first and take breaks to cool off in the water. If you have a pool, that's the safest place to start. If not, go to a lake or pond or anything flat water first with a shallow place to get in. We don't want to start on moving water. I can't emphasize enough that your first trip should really be a training trip and not, for instance, an entire day paddling with friends. You want to be able to bail if things aren't going as planned. Make sure you grab your treats too for reinforcement. Because you've done a ton of prep work, your dog should be able to easily hop on and off the boat on cue. Start them in shallow water where they can easily hop on and off on cue and treat the heck out of them for practicing these cues in a new and distracting environment. Stay outside the boat at first and simply practice hopping on, getting into position, and staying, and then hopping off. Once they're comfortable with this, get in yourself and then invite them to come in with you and practice paddling just a bit. It can be helpful on your first trip to have a friend or helpful available to push you off and to stabilize the boat as your dog gets in so they don't get startled. Reinforce your dog generously for staying in place on the boat. Paddle around a bit and allow your dog to get comfortable. Once they seem relaxed, head back to shore. Remind your dog to stay and reward heavily. Many dogs will want to jump off once they get close to shore. We don't want them self-releasing as it could be dangerous for them to do so if there's cars or other people or dogs on the shore. We want them to get in the habit of staying put until you give the cue. If you need to, clip the leash on as you head towards shore so they don't decide to bail. Once you get close to shore, reward again for maintaining a stay and then give the release cue. So that's it, your first successful kayak trip. You've officially got yourself an adventure dog. And if you want to have a better behaved adventure dog by your side, definitely check out this video here and be sure to click on it. You all have an awesome day and happy training.